In this video, we're going to look at the process for creating deep cross-cultural awareness and moving towards leading cross-cultural teams effectively. We saw in the last video how, when led well, cross-cultural teams can exceed the performance of any other teams. So, what are the steps towards this ideal? Here's an illustration of a simple six-stage continuum for the development of a multicultural team. The first stage, and frankly all too common, is denial. This is often a willful ignoring of all of the differences, pretending we're all the same, and if someone behaves in a way that is different, to ascribe it solely to individual personality and even to misbehavior. The second stage is polarization. Individuals who are different are pushed to the outside of the team. What we find is that biases and judgments about people because of their cultural differences prevail within the team. There is a tacit assumption that the majority are right and anyone who is different doesn't fit. The next stage is minimization, de-emphasizing the differences between us so that we can focus on what we have in common and kind of ignore those tricky edge cases, those tricky disagreements about the way we ought to behave, putting to one side the individual cultural norms that some of our colleagues have and treating them as something separate to the team itself. At level four, we have acceptance. And this is a proper recognition of the differences and importantly, accepting that those differences are fair, valid and part of the team itself. But it's only at the fifth stage that we start to make use of those differences. This is the adaptation stage where the team adapts itself to the differences and starts to value them properly. The ideal is what I call the welcoming stage. This is where everybody feels welcome, feels a proper part of the team. It is their team and they bring to it their own uniqueness. They feel no need to do anything other than express themselves as they are. And it is the diversity that gives the team its strength. In a welcoming team, everybody feels like they belong there. If this is the process for a team, or indeed for an organization as a whole, what about your personal journey? Well, for this, I can see a typical sequence that has seven steps. At step one, you expect everybody to behave as you do, but they don't. As a result, at step two, you react with frustration, with upset, or with anger. And this creates conflict either with the other person or within yourself. At step three, you're starting to become aware of your responses and the impact that they have on the relationships around you and on your performance and of the performance of the people around you. So at step four, you're starting to want to learn about the other person's culture, what it is that makes them think the way they do, react the way they do, and feel the way they do. And this leads you to step five, where you become open to new experiences and to learning. And as a result, you start to treat the people around you with a new level of respect and understanding. Now, at step six, you start to expect people to behave as themselves, rather than the way that you would. And, to understand and welcome that behavior. And the result of that at step seven is that relationships start to improve and so does performance. You are well on your way to becoming multiculturally sensitive. If you want to start to lead a multicultural team well, then there are three components that you have to put in place. And of course, it's also important 
to start to facilitate the team to cultivate all of these in the people around you as well. It's no use you being great at multicultural understanding, yet nobody else in your team even wanting to. So what are these three components? The first and arguably the simplest is cross-cultural knowledge, actually learning about other people and the way they react and how that relates to their culture to be able properly to interpret their behaviours rather than to make gross assumptions based on your own cultural norms and expectations. Second is your ability to make mindful choices, to approach your colleagues in a thoughtful way, to consider what you're observing and rather than react, to compare what you're observing with your knowledge and to choose how to respond accordingly. And third is your behaviour. Keeping your behaviour respectful at all times and not only respecting the behaviours and choices of your colleagues, but welcoming them. When you combine cross-cultural knowledge, mindful choices and respectful behaviour, that brings to the surface your cultural quotient. Rather like your IQ is a measure of how smart you are, your CQ is a measure of how accepting and understanding you are of cultural difference. Please do give a thumbs up if you like this video. There'll be loads more great management courses content to come, so please do subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.